Welcome back to New Rockstars, I'm Eric Voss, and let's talk about The Flash movie in the very peculiar way it approaches timeline logic. I call this the Paschetti Theory, because everyone in this movie is eating poorly made spaghetti and everyone's teeth are falling out like toddlers. But based on the rules of how timelines work in this Flash film and how it contradicts our understanding of movies like Avengers Endgame, there may actually be an answer to the big question left from this movie, who killed Barry's mother, Nora Allen? Quick announcement here, Marvel's Secret Invasion is coming to Disney Plus June 21st, my Easter Egg Breakdown is coming to the New Rockstar's main channel that day around 3 p.m. Eastern, and there are so many details and conspiracy theories in the show that you just gotta tune in and we're gonna know you're a scroll. Also, our after show Inside Marvel is coming back too, Wednesday mornings, live in person, West Coast Avengers Unite, and it will transition to being a Break Room channel exclusive, so be sure to subscribe to the Break Room as well as our Deep Dive channel for other great content. Okay, early in The Flash, Barry Allen explains to Iris West the specific timeline of events around his mother Nora's murder and his father Henry being falsely convicted of it. Barry says, My dad wasn't even at home. My mom sent him to go get a can of tomatoes. I thought whoever broke into the house thought it was empty. My mom was in there with the knife in her hand and things went bad. Just an absurd chain of events. Absurd indeed! In the Flash comics, we learned Barry's mother was actually killed by Reverse Flash Eobard Dawn, a villain from the future who needs Barry Allen to exist as the Flash to lead to his own existence, and thus needed Barry's inciting incident to become the Flash, his mother's murder. Basically, for Eobard, the ends justify the means because the means justified the ends. But the character of Reverse Flash does not come up at all in this film. We're just left with the lingering mystery of who would have stabbed a woman to death in a relatively safe neighborhood in broad daylight with elderly neighbors going on walks. These robbers, assuming just because the husband and father left for a quick grocery run that no other wife or kid would be in a large two-story house? So people of the YouTube jury, I present to you that someone did murder Nora Allen and that wasn't a robbery gone awry, that she was targeted with the same type of motive as her murder in the comics. So who was it? Eobard Thawne reverse flash in a hypothetical off-screen future that this franchise may never show us? Or someone else that we did see in this film? Well, to solve this, we must examine this film's alternate approach to multiverse logic. The Paschetti theory, as I call it. Michael Keaton, Bruce Wayne, uses spaghetti to actually explain it, saying, at some point, you probably saw a movie that told you that if you went back and changed the past, you'd create a kind of branch timeline, right? New present, new future. Well, time doesn't work like that. That's not how time works. You go back and change the past, you create a fulcrum. You put yourself on a whole other strand of spaghetti. New future, new past. It's retrocausal. It goes both ways. Really, it goes in several ways. Now, Barry starts asking about an ontological paradox model, but Bruce cuts him off, saying, what you did is you changed the future and you changed the past. If a person is stupid enough to mess with time, what you eventually get is a multiverse. Some strands run almost parallel, there will be inevitable intersections, and others that are just wildly divergent. So, unlike the way time travel is depicted in Avengers Endgame, and Back to the Future Part 2. In this movie, there are no branch timelines in which history up until the rupture point was left unchanged but then unfolded differently thereafter, but rather a skewing into a completely alternate reality in which history had already been playing out differently up until that point. This movie offers as an example the Back to the Future films, actually, which in the alternate timeline starred Eric Stoltz as Marty McFly, not Michael J. Fox, who in the normal timeline and in our reality replaced Eric Stoltz midway through that movie's production. And this history would have happened in the mid 80s before any of these berries would have been born. By the way, I did a really in-depth analysis of Back to the Future over on the Deep Dive channel, and if you want to support the Deep Dive channel, please grab one of our Deep Dive exclusive merch designs like this Indie I Love You shirt at nerdriot.shop. I have a lot of writing to do for these videos. It's not just the stuff I say, it's also communication with everybody behind the scenes at New Rockstars to make everything work as smoothly as possible. Grammarly Go helps with that a ton. Okay, so you know Grammarly, but Grammarly now has a new product, Grammarly Go. Grammarly Go provides personalized, generative, AI communication assistance that accelerates your productivity and unlocks creativity and empowers me to do my best possible work. You can customize your preferred style of communication by clicking set voice to personalize your tone and determine how you want to sound. If I want to coordinate with a production company about an upcoming video shoot while sounding formal, yet witty and engaging, I can do that in just a few clicks. If you need inspiration, say for how to decorate a set, you can input a prompt and Grammarly Go will provide you with ideas for whatever you need. The best part about Grammarly Go is that you can keep tweaking your writing until you're satisfied with it. Grammarly Go is basically your co-creator. You'll be amazed at what you can do with Grammarly Go. Sign up at Grammarly.com slash Rockstars06 to get 20% off Grammarly Premium. But anyway, this movie then defaults into what I refer to as my recurring eight types of time travel categories. Type 4, This Always Happened, aka Predestination, in which the initial act of time travel was faded by future time travel shenanigans. An unexplained phenomena that happened early in the movie are later revealed to just be 
characters in the future messing with themselves in the past. So in Prisoner of Azkaban, that mysterious Patronus that saves Harry from the Dementors, he later realized was cast by himself looping back on this moment. In Christopher Nolan's Interstellar, the ghostly hand when they go through the wormhole and the creation of the wormhole in the Tesseract construct itself are really the doings of Matthew McConaughey and future advanced beings looping back on the past to do it. In Terminator, the conception of John Connor and the technological breakthroughs at Cyberdyne caused by Kyle Reese looping back in history to protect Sarah Connor and the T-800 following him, leaving behind his advanced robotics to the past that Cyberdyne would discover and use to build AI. The movie Tenet does this too. Really, most time travel movies do this because it's kind of the best way to set up a mystery and pay it off in this dramatic catharsis. This always happened. And Barry confirms this later when he tells Bruce, certain people, certain events, certain strands of spaghetti drawn to each other like magnets. I've read all about temporal paradoxes and causal loops, but this is more than that. Inevitable intersections are something none of the theories could have anticipated because how do you explain that except for fate. And this movie reveals that that mysterious dark flash that knocked Barry out of the Chrono Bowl to collide with his past self 10 years prior was that same younger Barry looping back through time endlessly disfiguring his body as he tried to avert the fated deaths of Batman and Supergirl and his mother. A closed loop. This always happened. But if that young Barry, aka Dark Flash, tried endlessly to alter this history, what cosmic force stayed a step ahead of him to make sure that the history happened? That that knife went into Nora Allen every time? Going back to the question of who killed Nora Allen again and again and again and again. Well, Eobard Thawne remains a suspect and I think will always be the case in comics canon, but we just didn't see him in this film. However, this film's goal was to establish Barry's antagonist as himself. It's his own variant who becomes Dark Flash. And there is an interesting moment where, after Barry regains his powers in the Batcave, he experiences a nightmare with who we think is Dark Flash, who's been stalking him this whole movie. It's a monstrous gargoyle that snarls at the camera, revealing razor sharp teeth. But when we meet Dark Flash later, he doesn't have teeth like that, he just looks a bit older and withered when his mask crumbles away. Therefore, there must be an even monstrous Flash waiting somewhere in the future. A Flash who needs history to unfold with Nora Allen's death, who would stay a step ahead of that Dark Flash alternate Barry, because he knew what that Dark Flash would try to do. And I believe that monstrous Flash is our Barry, the movie's main timeline Barry. Not Barry now, not yet, because we do see his heart breaking as he says goodbye to his mother and lets her go, but imagine a hardened, more resolute Barry somewhere in the distant future who understands that the means must justify the ends. And what happens in the final shot of this movie? Barry's tooth falls out. Now yeah, it's a funny callback to his loose tooth earlier, but yes, leaving room for new jagged teeth to grow in. Let me know what you think about this theory. Again, please subscribe to New Rockstars, subscribe to The Deep Dive, subscribe to The Break Room, support us by grabbing some merch like this indie I love you shirt at nerdriot.shop, follow me on Instagram and Twitter at EA Voss, follow New Rockstars, and subscribe to New Rockstars for more analysis of everything you love. Thanks for watching. Bye.